We were told if Japan was occupied, the Japanese people would be exterminated from the face of the earth. As Allied forces close in on their homeland, Japanese pilots will turn to a last desperate weapon, the suicide attack. And a kamikaze came through and hit the center LFT and sunk it. That was our first experience with the kamikaze, and it was rather frightening. October 1944. An awesome fleet of 200 American ships, including 17 aircraft carriers loaded with more than 1,000 planes, spans the horizon off Leyte Island in the Philippines. The Japanese move to meet them, aware that the battle will determine the fate of Japan. Beating back the U.S. forces will buy an honorable peace. I think the Japanese wanted Leyte to be the last battle, followed by a peace treaty. But before negotiating a treaty, the Japanese wanted to chase the Americans away from Leyte, so our bargaining position would improve. To achieve such a big victory, a small number of pilots was not enough, so Japan sent three squadrons. An invasion force hits the island. Ships and planes from U.S. Navy Task Force 38 support the landings. Japanese warships must be kept away from the beachheads. Japanese planes must be stopped from blasting the American troops. The stage is set for an epic battle. American scouts prowl the Pacific, searching for the Japanese task force. And uh, all of a sudden, emergency flight quarters were sounded on the, on the communication system, and I knew what had happened. We'd located the Japanese forces. So we manned the ready room, and manned our airplanes, and we knew this was going to be a long one. The U.S. Navy's top ace, David McCampbell, plunges into the gopher broke Battle of Leyte Gulf. And I looked around and, and I saw just uh, my wingman and I up there. So then I called a ship and told them that we had about 40 fires up here. Could they send some help? Uh, the word came back uh, from the fighter director says, we don't have anybody else to send you. So Roy and I went to work on them. The combat is furious, dreamlike. During the frenzy, McCampbell scores nine kills. When he returns to his carrier, his gas tanks are sucking air. Only six rounds are left in his guns. McCampbell earns the Medal of Honor. The Japanese managed to maneuver a deadly fleet within range of Leyte. In the late afternoon, Butch Boris gets the order to attack. But the numbers don't add up. The enemy carriers are too far away to allow a margin of safe return. Right there you knew that probably half the planes could not return to the carrier. But we went ahead. And the sun had gone down. And we came upon them and we made our attacks. It was pretty heavy, and we lost a lot of them. The attack is successful. But as the sun disappears, U.S. pilots fly into a nightmare. We know we haven't got enough fuel to get home. The torpedo planes are calling out, uh, I'm out of fuel, I'm going in the water. And it was just a continuous thing like that all the way back. What's left of the air group limps home in darkness. U.S. carriers risk stalking Japanese submarines and try to help the fighters home by showing their lights. Boris follows the shreds of light and finds the deck. I got down. My wingman crashed into the barriers right behind me. From then on out, we were pushing airplanes over the side. They were landing in the water, parachuting out. 
And this went on until there were, there were no more airplanes. They were all gone, or the few of us got down. We lost over half of our aircraft that night. The beachhead on Leyte is secured, but the battle for the air is wicked. The Americans were full of energy. I was told that a hundred warplanes were flying toward the south. At first I thought this must be a mistake, crows or something, but it was no mistake. And I began worrying because I had only ten men. The B-24s bombed our airbase. I couldn't break into their formation. I chased the bombers for about 300 kilometers and attacked seven of them. Two were shot down. Walker Bud Mahurin is transferred to the Pacific after being shot down in Europe. He will survive yet another brush with death. Coming home from a mission, my airplane started to lose coolant. And when it started to clank, which is kind of an indication that it's going to catch on fire, I bailed out. And I spent about six hours in the ocean. Uh, in a one-man raft, scared to death, of course. The Air Sea Rescue folks uh, ended up by sending an uh, Air Sea Rescue boat out to pick me up. I came up on the deck of that rescue boat, and the crew handed me a cup of chocolate, hot chocolate, and I drank that hot chocolate down, went back to the stern, and threw up everything I'd eaten for 40 days. Quite exciting. U.S. forces fulfill General MacArthur's pledge to return to the Philippines. American power will strike next at a place few fighting men had ever heard of before, and none will ever forget, Iwo Jima. February 1945. Air and sea bombardment hammer Iwo Jima, only 750 miles from the heart of Tokyo. Iwo's strategic importance is its airstrip, used by the Japanese fighters to intercept American bombers on their way to Japan. Satoshi Anabuki takes on American bombers, unloading fire and destruction on the once untouchable Japanese mainland. It is a difficult challenge. The bombers could reach very high altitudes, and we had a hard time climbing up to intercept them. If we could wait at their anticipated altitude, then it was all right. I downed one bomber. I saw it catching fire, emitting black smoke and flying away. I couldn't see it crash. American bombers were headed back south after bombing the Hanshin area. I took off with the rest of my unit. They were at about 12,000 feet and made the mistake of not flying in tight formation. We shot down about 13 planes. I achieved glories because the enemy was careless. To protect the heavy bombers, the Americans need Iwo's airstrip as a base for P-51 escort fighters. American Marines launch an amphibious assault against Iwo Jima. Japanese resistance is fierce. Outnumbered in the air, only a handful of Japanese pilots defend the island. Iyozo Fujita, Japanese Air Force. We had radar on Iwo in the beginning. We were warned the enemy is coming. We took off, but they were not coming at all. They tricked us. We were confused, so we landed. Then a lookout saw them coming, and we took off again. We flew low, line astern, but were cut off. In just two days, we were completely destroyed. The battle for Iwo Jima is the bloodiest in the history of the U.S. Marines. 6,000 will die on that desolate island. 
17,000 are wounded. The Japanese lose more than 20,000 men. Only 1,000 are taken prisoner. Marine flamethrowers root out die-hard Japanese burrowed deep inside caves. Marines seize Iwo's airfield. Now crippled bombers returning to Tokyo can land on Iwo. But more important, long-range P-51 Mustangs can escort American bombers all the way to Japan. In the beginning, when the bombers came, our fighters could shoot some of them down. But later, when P-51s began escorting the bombers, we could do nothing. It became very difficult to defend the mainland. I knew that the rest of the war would be a great challenge. There is one more stepping stone to Japan, the fortress island of Okinawa. Allied warships mass offshore. The U.S. Navy had three carriers when the Pacific War began. Now there are 40. Easter Sunday, 1945. Marines and Army infantry land on Okinawa, seize the airstrip. The Japanese counterattack. In the air, they throw all their available fighters against the invasion fleet. Japanese pilots face swarms of U.S. fighters and bombers as thick as rain. They are desperate for a new strategy. Over Leyte Gulf, the Japanese tested a terrible weapon. Suicide pilots ordered to crash their planes into American targets. Off Okinawa, these human bombs, the kamikazes, drop from the sky like fireballs. Kamikaze is a surprise attack, according to our ancient war tactics. A surprise attack means to do something unexpected. Surprise attacks will be successful the first time, maybe for two or three times. However, eventually the Americans would find a way to protect themselves from our attacks. When I saw a suicide attack for the first time, I was very shocked. A fighter who was caught in the anti-aircraft fire made a body attack on the enemy's carrier. I felt how brave he is. Congratulations. But at the same time, I felt, was there any way to help him? So many different feelings came to mind. The kamikazes take a heavy toll of the U.S. fleet. Some get through the curtain of fire. 38 U.S. naval vessels will be lost. American pilots must find a way to defend against an adversary for whom death in battle is the supreme honor. Kamikaze, divine wind. Pilots plunged to destruction inside zeros weighted with 500 pound bombs. They create carnage in the fleet off Okinawa's shores, dodging Hellcats and Corsairs on the way down. The Americans attacked Okinawa. Against such an enemy, against the unexpected moves of the enemy, no strategy would have been effective. No strategy was planned. The planes that flew near Okinawa received orders to attack, attack, attack. Well, there was no other way then to make kamikaze attacks. We did not have time to plan a strategy. American gunners throw up a wall of fire against the suicide attacks. It is so intense, even their own pilots are shot down. I bailed out uh, off the island of Okinawa during that campaign. Uh, the United States Navy USS Beale shot me down while they were trying to fire at another uh, at a Japanese airplane. They hit the wrong airplane. <laughs> Once the gunners take over, they shoot at everything. The old saying, shoot them all down and start them out on the ground. 
And uh, it's awful hard to get them to stop once they start firing. The orders to fly and die come from above. Some Japanese pilots question the fanatical doctrine of death. I went on the very first kamikaze mission. Kamikaze attacks were very, very foolish attacks. All the men who were in the headquarters lied. Every pilot volunteered for a kamikaze unit. I go, I go, I go. Did everyone say that? That's a lie. You are ordered. So and so numbers from that squadron. So-and-so numbers from this squadron. Only a fool would want to go for a sacrifice attack. The commanding officers told us, if you want to volunteer for the kamikaze unit, hand in a slip of paper with your name on it. If you don't want to volunteer, hand in a slip of paper with your name on it. In the climate of the Japanese military forces during the war, it was very difficult to say you didn't want to die. Americans who heard kamikaze stories think that the Japanese must be strange. They think we are crazy. We are not crazy. Both American pilots and Japanese pilots are the same human beings. We are there people who will volunteer to die. No one wants to die. But if a pilot was ordered, we were all military men. We, we would go. I think the Americans might have thought the kamikaze attack was a very poor strategy. And if the commanding office had had a better strategy, they would have used it. But in fact, there was no alternative. It was a dying struggle. Compared to the number of planes that made kamikaze attacks, the results were not very satisfactory. The losses were greater than the glories. I tried to lift up the young pilots' morale. I made songs, awarded them kill markers, but it was difficult to lift up the morale. If new planes had been built and the pilots trained to fly them, then they would have achieved victories and their confidence would have grown. But by the end of the war, I too felt so depressed. The battle for Okinawa ends on June 22, 1945. Casualties on both sides exceed 100,000. The island is a wasteland. Swarming kamikazes destroy 38 American warships, killing 5,000 sailors and airmen. Allied planners ask themselves, if it is like this on Okinawa, what will it be like when we invade Japan? After Okinawa's fall, only the Japanese mainland was left. No enemy ships were to be allowed to reach the mainland. That was an order. All the pilots were ordered to make sacrifice attacks. That was a strategy for winning battles on the mainland. Fight to the death, die on the coast. If a decisive battle actually happened, Japan would be a disaster. Tokyo was all burned down from B-29 raids. If the emperor saw what happened to Tokyo, why didn't he demand to stop the war? When I faced the Americans' continuous raid on the mainland, I felt that Japan would not be able to win the war because we were pushed to the edge. Of course, I did not express my opinion. Even though I felt that there was no way to stop the enemy, we non-commissioned officers could not do anything. The only thing we could do was to continue fighting. It is clear Japan will not surrender. Invasion will mean an ocean of blood. Some might have felt that we would lose the war, but I didn't think we would lose until the last minute. I figured that when we were suffering, the enemy must be suffering too. That's the way I saw it. So when I heard the emperor's announcement ending the war, I was very frustrated.
War II ends as it began, in flames. The vanquished mourn. The victors celebrate. A weight is lifted from the planet. For a moment, there is no peril in the sky. That moment will be all too brief. Still, it is a moment to cherish. <laughs>